Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create some underwater effects and two different examples of water effects. One where we use the depth of the camera or the Y position of the camera to detect when we're low enough to be underwater, or we're going to use two different water volumes to be able to say that when we're in a collider or a trigger, we should have this post processing effect. I do actually have a tutorial on looking at volumes and how to blend between them, and I'll post that in the description. And I wanted to mention that this is one of the first tutorials that I ever created in Unity. I'll actually leave a link so you can laugh at it down below. And do be sure to check out Unity's brand new mega bundle, which is 23 assets for $23. There's some insane tools, massive environments, and it's every single asset for $1, which is absolutely incredible. We're going to be using URP today, and you can do this in the standard and HDRP, and I'll put links in the description to show you how to use post-processing in all those things. So to get started, I've got the tropical nature environment from the Sinti assets because it has some nice water that we can use. And I'll put the link below to that as well. Now to begin, URP doesn't actually require you to import post-processing, but if you're using any other version other than URP, you may need to go to Package Manager, Unity Registry and search for post-processing. So what I've done is I've created an empty game object and I've just called this my surface volume. I'm just going to add the volume component. I'm going to keep it on as global because this is just going to be the same whenever we use it. You can keep the weight as one and we need to create a new profile so you can click new. I've actually created a couple of profiles so I'll just show you my surface profile here. It's got bloom, color adjustments, tone mapping and vignette. Now if I change I've also got an underwater profile. And the only difference between this is I've actually used a gamma lift. So when we switch the profile out, it's just got a blue hue with all these trackballs. I've just pulled it down to the bottom. So we can swap the post-processing profiles and get an entire different look of our scene. Do be sure to throw a like on this video and all these scripts will be on my Patreon along with 205 different scripts, assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else. I've named this script Underwater Depth. So first of all, we're going to have a transform component to the main camera. So we want to find the main camera. And we want to set what our depth should be at any point. So we need to detect when we're so low. Then we're going to have an update method. And we'll say that if our main camera dot position dot Y is ever less than the depth value that we've set. So if it's ever below that, we most likely are going to be underwater. We want to enable or disable some effects. So that there, I'm going to create a method called enable effects and have that as a parameter boolean and set that to active and if we're below that depth i'm going to say that enable effects is equal to true because we'll enable them and then if there's any other case we just want to say that enable effects is false because we don't want to do any of the effects now we can do something very similar to enable the effects in here so we want to change our post processing but when it's active we'll change it and when we don't we'll do something else we need to create a reference to our volume so we say private volume the post processing volume and then we want a reference to our volume profile. So I've named one the surface post-processing and the underwater post-processing. So now to access both of those, we can say that the post-processing volume dot profile is equal to our underwater post-processing. And then in the other case, we can say that our post-processing profile is equal to our surface post-processing profile. I'm just going to put this on my main camera. So I'm just going to add the underwater depth. So we can leave it at zero. We can select the actual surface volume here and add it in here. We're going to select our two profiles. So we'll select the surface and the underwater profiles. And then make sure you add the camera or whichever object is going to change its position. When I show you this and I move down, you can see that the post-processing changes because we know it went to that blue color. Now, this looks okay for now, but we might want to adjust another effect. It might want to adjust the fog. If you go to window, rendering and lighting and go to the lighting tab and then move across to environment, you can enable fog. If you enable fog, you can set the color to blue and you can set it to linear. And I'll put the start at zero and the end at 50. You can adjust these depending on what you want. So we're just going to enable and disable this fog when we want it. So that's another thing that we can add when we go under the water. So if we go back to our script this time, so when we enable the effects, we can just say that render settings dot fog is equal to true and then render settings dot fog is equal to false so now when we go down we'll enable that fog and now it looks much more like we're actually underwater you could always duplicate the water plane which we have here 
And if you rotate that around 180 degrees when we're underneath the water, you will be able to see the water underneath too. This entire script and the project, apart from the visual assets, because these are not mine to give away, it'll all be on my Patreon, along with over 205 different scripts, assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else. So like I said, if you wanted to create yourself a the volumes to be able to use it instead of doing it by depth, here we can create ourselves a cube which is going to act as the trigger. So when we go into the water through this cube, it's going to change the post-processing. I'm just going to call that my surface trigger and then we're going to put one underneath the water. So when we go into that one, this is going to be called our underwater trigger. Now what I'm going to do on my surface trigger is add a volume component again. I'm going to set this as local and set the blend distance to 0.5 so we can blend between the two. We can actually disable the mesh render and you can still see the outline here. Then we'll just click the three dots and next to that volume, copy the component and add it to our water, underwater component. Then paste it in, keep the local on 0.5 and that's fine. We'll get rid of the mesh renderer there too. Then on the surface trigger, you want to make sure that it's is trigger and with the one below. That's is trigger too. You want to add your profiles so you can see that the surface trigger. You can set that to your surface profile that we already created. And the underwater one, we can set that to the underwater profile. We've started in this trigger volume that we can't actually see. And if we go down, we blend between the two because you can see the subtle blend between them. So you don't just get an abrupt change. You get a slight change there and it works as we suggested. Now you also might want to create a way to enable and disable those fog effects. So you can right click and create a new script. And then I'm just going to have that as enable fog. And now what I've done here is I've just created a void on trigger enter. So if the player enters the trigger, then we'll enable the render settings. If the player exits the trigger, the render settings will turn off. So we could go to our underwater trigger like we looked at before and we're going to add our enable fog script to that. And then, like I said, make sure your player or your camera has a box collider, has a rigid body to do the collision and it's got a tag of player. And then when we go down, it will enable those that fog effect and it will do it above and below and transition between the two. I'll put these two scripts and the project on my Patreon so you can mess around with it all you want. And do be sure to check out all the links down below to get all the best sales savings that you can find for this month across Humble and the Unity Asset Store. And a big thank you to all my patrons, a special thank you to Peter Steiner and everybody else who comes to watch the video. So don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.